Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans. Welcome to the attic. It's time for another voicemail. Today's voicemail is from Keith. Let's listen to what Keith has to say. Hi, Lloyd. I just wanted to record this real quick and say that I appreciate what you're doing with your YouTube channel. And I just wanted to tell you that your channel, along with many other documentaries and things that I've found in the last year or two especially, has been very helpful in getting me to stop my study with Jehovah's Witnesses. You do have my permission, by the way, to use this. Uh, my name is Keith, by the way, and I'm happy if you mention my name. I don't mind who knows it, but uh, I guess I have one quick question for you. And that question would be just this. I guess what's so baffling to me in my short time of being around the Jehovah's Witnesses for the last year or two um, is just this. It's that they actually can't sense any kind of issues, or at least one of the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses who I studied with certainly didn't seem to be able to. I, I remember asking him to read out of his New World Translation one day. We we read over John 1.1. 1, 1. I opened up a Bible on my computer that I believed to be trustworthy and not modified up the you-know-what, <laughs> like the New World Translations tend to be. And, and I went ahead and read out of my copy, and he read out of his copy, and I noticed the problems right away, but he couldn't tell or didn't want to be able to tell, or maybe his brain just didn't care. I, I don't know. Maybe that's just part of indoctrination, but it shouldn't take a totally blind person to to be able to pick up on other people's blindness, should it? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I just wonder how it is that I can pick up on the blindness that he has, and yet he has no clue. And yet my eyes don't work. <laughs> anyway, I just want to say again, Lloyd, it's a wonderful uh pleasure to leave you this message. I hope that you appreciate it, and I would like to leave you with a sincere, uplifting, heartfelt comment that comes from the heart as a gift. Um, I would support you in some monetary way or something, but uh, that's a little bit of a problem for me at the moment, so I'll just leave you with this. You make a difference in the world, and the world is a better place with you in it. Thank you, Lloyd, for what you're doing. Please keep shining a light into the darkness that is the Watchtower organization, because I don't think it's the people. Not from my experience. I think it's the system that is the problem, the organization. I wonder what you think about that. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Keith. That was a really uplifting message to receive, and I might add I'm receiving it or I'm making this video on the 115,000 subscriber milestone, which we've just gone past. So it felt like a nice message to be answering. And I certainly do appreciate the very kind and generous words that you've expressed there about the channel and the way it's helped you. Uh, obviously, it's something I'm very keen on, the fact that the content that I put out is able to help people in some way and if it's helped you then that's absolutely wonderful. You do bring up a very interesting subject which is the inability of Jehovah's Witnesses to be reasoned with and in your particular instance you refer to John 1 verse 1 I'm going to be completely honest, as you probably know, I'm an atheist, so I don't really have a horse in the race of, is Jesus God or not? And I can understand that this particular verse and the way it's rendered in the New World Translation will be more frustrating for, let's say, mainstream Christians uh, who believe in the Trinity than for people like myself who don't consider the Bible to be God's inerrant word. Nonetheless, I have included John 1 verse 1 in my doctored series. I'm going to put a thumbnail here for those who aren't aware. But basically, my viewers and I, as like a collective investigation, we went through the New World Translation. I haven't finished the series, by the way, 
But so far we've been able to uncover dozens of examples where the New World Translation has been modified from the consensus of scholarly accepted translations of the Bible. And usually when they modify it, it's either to do with Jehovah's Witness teachings and Jehovah's Witness dogma, as in the case of the Trinity, or it's to, quite frankly, make the Bible sound more palatable <laughs> and less problematic, shall we say, than, than the unfiltered Bible sounds when you read it. So this is a, a, a genuine issue, and I'm honestly not surprised that when you present information to a Jehovah's Witness that raises this glaring problem of their Bible being doctored, I definitely relate to Jehovah's Witnesses just raising a wall and just refusing to talk about it. I think what that is, or well, I don't think, I know what it is, is cognitive dissonance. That's what you're running up against. And I actually did a video where I interviewed an expert on cognitive dissonance, and it was a really interesting conversation for me personally. I learned an awful lot about it, because quite often when we talk about cognitive dissonance, or when people talk about cognitive dissonance, they talk about it like it's some illness, or like it's some kind of abnormality that only certain people have, when the truth is, of course, that we all have cognitive dissonance, and we all need cognitive dissonance, because cognitive dissonance serves a very important evolutionary function, which is to preserve our sense of self. So everything to do with the, our values and the way we see the world, the way we perceive the world, our ideologies, whether these are religious or political, all of those things kind of merge to form our sense of self and who we are. And if it were possible for someone to just come along, walk up to someone and show them information that debunks their cherished beliefs, then we would be a mess as human beings. We would be in a constant state of flux. We would be in a state of constant confusion because we would be constantly changing our minds. If it was just as simple as receiving new information. And that's why there is such a problem when it comes to having these conversations both between people of different religious persuasions or worldviews, but we also see it in politics as well. You know, we, we see a complete inability of, say, one political side to engage with another political side in a meaningful and productive way because quite frankly, we're talking about individuals whose political views are part of who they are. And if they were to just be easily swayed by whatever facts are presented to them, then we're done as humans. We, we wouldn't have our sense of self intact. Um, probably you know all this already, but it's maybe just worth kind of revisiting this topic and just reminding ourselves that this problem isn't going anywhere and it's not unique to Jehovah's Witnesses. It's not just Jehovah's Witnesses who have this inability to see the flaws in their religious beliefs. It really is a case when we're helping people to get out of the organization it really is a case of just letting people have the information available for when they are ready to look at it. And believe me, I've tried myself with family members <laughs> to do the whole confrontational uh, or approaching them with information strategy. Never, ever works. The, the person needs to be at a point in their journey where, where they are ready to give themselves permission to start questioning their beliefs. That's how it needs to work, unfortunately. But it's a really interesting topic to delve into, and I'm glad that you tagged on the end there that you believe that Jehovah's Witnesses are good people. It's just 
the the system it's just the organization that's exploiting them that's consistently been my message on this channel and as i pass 115,000 subscribers and is it 2000 videos at this point um i hope that future videos can continue along this model of just putting the information out there so that when people are ready, when they are at that place in their lives where they're ready to start questioning what they believe, the information is just there for them. And, you know, they can view it at their own time. And if we know people, if, if we encounter people, the main thing is to just be as, as patient and kind and respectful as possible. But I really, really appreciate you leaving that message. Don't forget that if you would like to leave a voicemail, the thing to do is go to speakpipe.com forward slash cedars, remembering to indicate clearly if you don't want me to broadcast your message on this channel. But that's all I have time for. Thank you so much for watching.